Hey everybody, Zach here, and I just got access to the brand new Tonex editor, and I wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts, give you a quick look at this software. I know we are all very excited about this update, and so, without further ado, Let's dive in. Now, first things first, I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like. Now, hopefully you can see this here, but it is a different piece of software. You've got the original Tonex app, and now you have the Tonex editor. So in this case, this is what's going to allow us to make those adjustments from our desktop onto my Tonex. And it's pretty straightforward. It's not super flashy, but I think ultimately it does what we all want it to do, which is give us a tool to quickly, easily make adjustments with our Tonex without having to do what we used to have to do. And you have to, you know, make your adjustments on the desktop. You gotta save it, then you gotta upload it. You couldn't hear those changes in real time, and now you're gonna be able to. So what we've got here is very reminiscent of the original Tonex app. We've got all of our different captures right down here. And then up top, we've got our signal chain. And then over here, we've got some different settings and things we can adjust. So from here, if we want to adjust our overall volume, that's this guy. If we want to make any adjustments, this is where the revert button will take us back to the original capture. And then you'll notice here this O1A, as we start to make adjustments or if I revert back, this will be green if it's the original capture with no adjustments made. And then it changes to orange as we start to go in and you know kind of tweak everything. Now, just like the original hardware, if you make any changes, if you actually want those changes to be saved, you have to physically save it or save as a new capture. In this case, if I make a ton of adjustments, navigate to somewhere else, go back, it's gonna just revert to whatever that pre-saved version was. I think that's pretty straightforward, but just in case you didn't know. And then over here on the right, we've got our tap tempo. We've got some different adjustments that we can do here in terms of backing up our actual software and then whichever version we're currently on. Now, one thing that I do like that they added inside of this little gear icon, we've got access to the same thing we had within the menu of the hardware. So if I want to go in and adjust for global or a preset tap tempo, I can do that here. And then under the global setup, this is where we've got access to adjust our input trim, main volume, the overall interface volume, and then we can navigate to our external controls, MIDI, tuner, so on and so forth. Now, I think all of that's pretty straightforward, but I do like now that the general allows us to go in and see all of those general setup settings that were available on the hardware within this unit. So now I think it's much easier to see what we are looking at. And then if I wanna go in and let's say I wanna change the naming convention, and I just wanna see the name of the capture in real time as I make adjustments, that's happening here on the physical pedal as well. To see that a little bit more, we're gonna now look at the actual signal chain. And this is where we can go in and I've got a capture from Alter Ampworks. It's their ProSonic, it's a phenomenal capture. Feel free, check that out in the description. But then past that, once I start to make adjustments from the editor, as I add or remove bass, that is also happening, and I can see that adjustment being made on the physical hardware, which is super cool, and I'm very happy we finally have this. Now, from here, then we can go in, again, make all of the changes that we want, adjust the depth, presence. We also have the ability here within the cab to either upload a custom IR or do the virtual IR, which is an update that went live a little while back. This allows you to digitally blend and create your own unique impulse response. I think this is super awesome, but for now, I think we'll just leave it at the original tone model. Then over here, we have the same previous rollout or previous firmware that went live, where now we've got some additional effects. So we've got modulation, delay, reverb, None of that has changed. The only thing that's different here is just simply that we can visually see it inside of the Tonex editor. So if I go in and I add, I make any adjustments, once again, just be sure to hit save. And then all of this, as I'm clicking, dragging, moving things, I'm seeing it show up right here, which is awesome. And same thing, if I click down here and I navigate to my different 
captures, all of that's happening here. I think that's all pretty straightforward and really it's not anything groundbreaking outside of just improving that quality of life and making the editing process much easier. I found that editing on the physical hardware, especially on the Tonex pedal, was okay. It was a small screen, but it worked. But on the Tonex One, it's very hard to do because you don't have that display on the physical unit. Now over here, we've got our editor. Now we have our librarian. And this is what's going to allow us to drag, drop, pull things in from the library of our different captures within Tonex. So we've got quite a bit of you know, different options here. This auto load option, if I go in and just click, it will immediately load it versus if I turn this off, I have to double click and then it loads it. And then right up top here, we've got our preset, tone models, and then tone net. So we can go in and pull up just you know everything that's available within our presets and tone models. We've got a filter right up top here, just like we do with the Tonex software. You also have this little search icon right here where you can go in and if you just wanna pull up everything Fender, quickly and easily see that right here. And then if you've downloaded anything from the Tone Net, once again, all of that's going to be here. And it's really just as easy as finding the capture that we want, clicking, dragging, pulling it over into our Tonex, and then all of that's just coming over in real time on my actual hardware. Now, right off the cuff, the only thing that I'd probably like to see them change is within this library view, be able to give us the option to kind of drag and pull things left or right, depending on what we want to see more of. I do feel like this is a ton of information and you know, it's fine, I think it works, but it's a little bit of data overload. And then within the actual editor, I'm really not too sure what else they could ultimately end up adding here because the Tonex is a pretty simple user interface. There's not a ton of fluff to it and that's one of the reasons that I really like it. It does the amp technology and the capture process incredibly well. It's very cost effective and it's not super expensive. And so I think because of this, the editor does exactly what it set out to do gives you an easier way to edit from your computer and make those adjustments on your hardware. If you guys got any questions, let me know down in the comments. I will see you guys next time.